Podcast presents Fifty Halloween Later. Hello, welcome back to Chromis Presents. 13 Halloweens Later. 13 Halloweens Later. Presented to you by Chromis. Chromis, the parent company of Chromis Studios. <laughs> yeah, he like totally parthenogenically reproduced all of these sub companies and <laughs> franchises. It's like really biologically and entrepreneurially impressive. Yes, and that is how we know that entrepreneurship is part of evolution. And we are two of those business polyps. We live on a couch. We are brothers, but not cousins. We fuck in different beds. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, yeah, this is our show. I'm Sam. And I'm Jam. (laughs) Tonight we watched a really, possibly the worst Halloween so far. I disagree. It was quite bad. What the fuck do you think is fucking worse than this? This one was awful. It was Halloween 8. Which Season is, of the bitch. Which is the sequel to H2O. Halloween colon. The, 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 the title of the movie is Halloween colon Resurrections. The thing is... They make it seem like Michael Myers is going to get resurrected because he gets killed at the end of the last movie. But it's dead. At the beginning of this movie, they reveal that somehow there was a mix-up and that Michael Myers had put his mask somehow, on a paramedic Michael has and returned. pinned him like thrown him onto Laurie Strode's car apparently so that he could get pinned in this car accident. And Laurie chopped his head off instead of Michael's. And it's explained that... Which is stupid and impossible. (laughs) But you're also leaving out the conveniently written fact that that Michael had crushed his larynx. Honestly, incredibly stupid. I hated it. It it immediately not only uh, negated the thing I was the most excited about in the movie, which was Michael Myers being uh, occultically resurrected, but it negated the the my favorite part of the last movie, which was Michael cho- uh, Michael getting his head chopped off by Laurie. Yeah. Like it did both of those things in one fell swoop, less than ten minutes into the movie, and then and then it uh, and then Laurie is haunted by Laurie she lives ha- in a uh, like. It seems like it's a low security prison for people with like mental disabilities. Yeah. And they say she's gone comatose or no, they say he hasn't spoken in a few years. They say she's suffering from extreme extreme dysphoria. Dissociation. Yeah. Yeah. So she's experiencing the uh, third most common anxiety. Yeah. We find out that they think uh, she hasn't spoken a word in three years. And that she is basically just a vegetable. But we see as soon as the nurses leave the room that she's been stuffing all her pills in this little creepy doll. And the nurses also say that they, the doctors think she's a suicide risk because they've seen her up on the roof a few times. <sighs> Which... I feel like it's always important to explain the first scene of a Halloween movie. Like, no matter how shitty the movie is, you still have to explain the pre credit scene. I agree. It's an important part of the plot, even if the rest of the plot is stupid. Yeah, in this, in the case of this movie, the, the cold open does, does not impact the rest of the movie in the slightest, whereas, like, Halloween ends, the cold open casts such a wide shadow over the rest of the movie. Like, uh, dear listener, you would think that Laurie Strode is in more than the first 15 minutes of this movie, right? Jamie Lee Curtis's first build. She's first build. You think that she is a main character in the whole movie, right? <laughs> right. 
In- incorrect. What? Fucking she. Okay, so Michael is stalking her. He gets into the hospital or the the wherever prison she is. asylum um, and sanctuary. And uh, she lures him up to the roof. And when we get up there, we realize that she has planted some traps, and that's why she was on the roof. Because, as we know from Halloween Ends, she would never kill herself. Yeah, but Halloween... Canonically. <laughs> we can't know that from Halloween Ends in this movie, only in that we have seen... Shut up, it's still Jamie Lee Curtis. It's still <laughs> Laurie Strode, this... and you cannot talk to me about continuity. She is a consistent character. Anyways, she lures... I'm saying Halloween Ends was made... 20 years after I know, this movie. But Laurie Strode. Lures but him up Laurie to the roof. Strode. <laughs> and she like catches his foot in a little hook and she hangs him upside down and uh, is about to drop him off of the roof, which we later find out is like one story and would not have <laughs> impacted him <laughs> at all. But she gets racked with guilt and is like, oh fuck, I have to check and make sure that this is the right guy. She tries to take his mask off. And she she goes up with the knife. It's like going up with a knife against Michael. Going up with anything that could be a weapon against Michael is always a mistake. Yeah, because he's just going to get it. Yeah. Unless it's a gun, he's just going to knock it out of your hands and then kill you with blunt objects. Yeah. But if it's like a stabby weapon, like, you're just giving it to him. Exactly. And she gives it to him. Yeah. He yanks her off the roof. He somehow makes her stab herself in her own back, and then she fucking dies. And then the credits roll. She wait, 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 wait. You're forgetting that she kisses him on the lips oh, of his mask. Jesus. I I forgot that on purpose because I hated it. Yeah, like they're they're both hanging off the side of this building. And she gives him a little terrifying smooch. That makes me so upset and is going to give me more nightmares. It makes absolutely no fucking sense. And then she says, see you in hell. And then falls to her death. One story after being stabbed in the kidneys. It's horrible. It That... That is... It's unceremonious, and she is not even mentioned in the rest of the movie. They aren't like, oh, they found Laurie Strode. They're just like, oh, 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 time for some reality TV shenanigans. Yeah, this is worse than uh, than Jamie Lloyd's death in Halloween 6. Definitely. But I think this movie does other things that I like, which makes me almost entirely forget the opening scene exists this movie is incredibly horny most of the main characters go to haddonfield university a new (laughs) development in illinois (laughs) which i found hilarious haddonfield you man you go to haddonfield state there are actually a lot of people from my high school that went to haddonfield you so i really don't appreciate you making a joke about this (laughs) <laughs> it's Haddonfield U actually has a really good teaching program <sighs> and it's disrespectful for you to say otherwise teach me how to care <laughs> <laughs> this movie exhausted me I was already tired and this movie just wrung me out like a towel <laughs> it's basically so I recently watched a movie with a shout out Eamon uh about shout out past and if we keep doing a podcast future guest yeah uh we watched a movie called dead stream that's about a uh like youtube streamer uh shithead uh going into a haunted house and trying to spend the night there on halloween and uh ghosts and this movie is ghosts like the early 2000s equivalent of that like they uh basically these kids are auditioning and get picked to be in this like reality tv show run by buster rhymes and tyra banks yeah and both playing characters that are not themselves but yeah 
they what year did this movie come out you said 2003 or 2005 and i I did not look into it oh and your phone is over there and my phone is in the other room listener you'll just have to google for yourself hey google oh no she heard me (laughs) (laughs) when did halloween resurrection come out hey google when did halloween resurrection come out Wow. Jeez, Google just told us the answer. I bet you guys couldn't hear it at all and that that was compelling radio. But it was uh, 2002. Yeah. And it really feels like it. Starbuck is in this movie playing like a manic sexy dream girl. Manic sexy dream girl? Yeah. Do, do you know that you're uh, saying the phrase incorrectly? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I just wanted I to know if you're doing it on purpose. Because, like, she's not even playing, like, the normal, like, I'm quirky. She's like, I'm quirky, but I really want live TV to see my cleavage. Yeah. But, like, not even in, like, a fun way, just in, like, a, like, a, I don't know. It weirds me out. It's, it, she's. It's a she, weird performance. In, in, in retrospect, she's playing against type. Yeah, cl- definitely. She's playing against, like, everything I've seen her in. But at this point, Katie Sackhoff wasn't... Which was very jarring. In- yeah, but at this point, she wasn't an established act. She wasn't like, even she wasn't- doll. Doll. Uh, she-, she was in Riddick. Oh, right! <laughs> she was in Riddick 3! Wait, no, is she in 3 or is, it- is she in 2? I guess she's in... Three because two is the the Necronomicon <laughs> of the Riddick. Tri- okay, anyways, we are getting way off track. Um, she yeah, she plays off type in this movie. There's a a cast of horny teens who are just absolute shitheads to each other. Like one they're, of them's they're like not teens. They're twenty. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting because These, they're so annoying. This, this 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 movie is like all right, Halloween, the next generation. Yeah, it's aged up. It's like Halloween. American Pie. (laughs) (laughs) Like, they're making jokes that are like, does that line get you laid with history majors? Because it doesn't fly for critical studies. Like, it's so... Mm -hmm. (laughs) He he says says it it gets music majors, sometimes even poli-sci. Yeah, it's... Uh, And like... So the main, um, like, catch of the whole situation, like, they are basically live streaming 2002 version with little cameras strapped to their heads and battery in the packs Myers house um, on Halloween night, three years after the most recent killings. Yeah, so three years after H2O. Yeah, and um, they're just supposed to, like, poke around and be salacious. And um, Freddie and Tyra. Freddie and Tyra. Freddie and Tyra. One of them's a character name. One of them's just her name. Um, have like a control room, and they have like some tricks planned. And so um, that seems to be like the tension that they were going for in the movie was like, oh, what parts of this are a trick? What parts of this are, are a real trick? Are like Michael and. Um, there are clues throughout. But which parts are a treat? There are clues throughout that Michael is living in the house still. <laughs> and one of the best clues, which I think <laughs> is great. Sam, do you want to take it? Sure. They're in they're in the kitchen. Like the the kids get there and they're just exploring. And in the kitchen they look through the spices. Yeah, one of the kids is very food-oriented, so he opens up the spices and is like, do you think this would smell really gross? He's like, you want to smell 40-year-old fennel? And then uh, and then he opens it and smells it and goes, it smells fresh. <laughs> Michael lives here. He's been replacing the spices. Why is he replacing the spices? Because later we find out that he, he has a secret basement level, which is too large for the Myers home. It's the you called it the Myers catacombs. Yeah, it's the Myers catacombs. <laughs> and there are a bunch of half-eaten rats down there. And clearly, you're supposed to be like he restocked the seasonings for his meat, but like. <laughs> but he's just taking bites out of rats, and then there's also a putting pot- fennel on this rat. And there's also a pot down there. So, like, there's a... He has a kitchen down there. Yeah, so why does he keep the spices upstairs? It's so stupid. 
doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> and it's totally like, oh, Chekhov's fennel. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. This whole movie is Chekhov's blank. And, like, most of them, like, pay off in really disappointing ways or don't come back at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just throw a lot in there to, like, throw you off. This is also the second movie in which uh, the, like, rather special guest gets seemingly killed and then comes back and is like, I was actually fine at the end of the movie and yeah. helps out. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. We don't know if we mentioned it, but last movie, LL Cool J was a character. And we, we probably did, and then we're going to listen back to that one and be like, why did we... What was his character name? Ronnie? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Security guard. I'm pretty sure we talked. But in, yeah, in this movie, uh, Freddy gets stabbed twice by Michael Myers and then bursts in through a window later and saves the main character's life, whose name is Sarah? Maybe. I don't know. The, the names of the characters in this movie do not matter other than Freddy and Michael. Yeah, those are the only two names I can remember because one of them constantly self-narrates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Freddy's always talking to himself. He's just like, yeah, Freddy, you really did a good job on this one. He has a really good line Freddy, at the end of the movie. you come up with stuff though. off the top of the dome. His line at the end of the movie where he's like, Michael Myers isn't clickbait or Snapchat. <laughs> he's just... A baggy ass cargo pants wearing motherfucker who's he no this. fun and never stops stabbing. No. That's all. Turn off the cameras. <laughs> it is that is that is the vibe. <laughs> I will agree. Um, but he Buster Rhymes is Freddy. Arguably goes through the most character development over the course of the movie. He starts off as head of dangertainment who's setting up the whole thing yeah and he ends up and he's like a craven capitalist and he ends up at the end not even wanting to be on camera mm -hmm. and it's all because he saw 10 people that he knew get murdered by one man which i think would change a person yeah michael myers is the ultimate social media detox is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you if you think you uh, have an Instagram addiction, just spend a night in the Myers house on Halloween. Oh yeah, you'll be fine. They'll snap you right out of it. Or at snap one point, you right into it. At one point, Michael Myers and Freddie are in the same room, and they're oh, both yeah. wearing Michael Myers masks. Like there's this, a, this shot is, for a while. This is a really cool part yeah. of the movie. It's maybe the best part. It's it is it's pretty trippy in that you're just like like you're seeing one Michael go and then one Michael just trails like a little bit behind. It's not exact. They're often both in the same frame. You're watching this from uh like cameras that have been set up throughout the house as opposed to the cameras strapped to characters' heads. Yeah. And so you just see like this procession of two Michaels walking through a room. And it actually is like a fairly good effect, especially with the um, graininess of the cameras, which is the thing that I like about this movie. Yeah. I like that whenever they're like trying to get you involved in like the live stream of it, they make it super grainy. Yeah, it's down to 240p, baby. It's good. Yeah. Um, but like Michael is following Michael through this room and you're like, oh my God, what is going on? Why which are there one is two which? of these guys? Is this Halloween 4? Is this a dream? Yeah. And... Um, then the Michael in front turns around and is clearly Freddy and is like, dude, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah, and then he, like, Michael just seems confused and then Freddy keeps yelling at him. Yeah, and Freddy he's thinks that he's, um, Charlie, the co-worker who was the first kill. Yeah. And he, uh, Freddy just keeps telling him to, like, go the fuck away. And... And then he does. Yeah. Because there, he doesn't take the mask off, which I think is critical 
for Freddy surviving that interaction. Definitely. Michael just seems kind of like baffled. He's just like, well, all right. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you look like me, but you talk and I can understand talk and I, I know what you're saying and I don't and I don't understand what's happening. And then he just uh, goes off and kills Tyra because Freddy's like, I left the door open for you, man. It's unlocked. It's right over there. <laughs> yeah, do you think do you think Tyra is the next kill? Because she's yeah. she's killed off screen and but Which we also, is an insult. Like I, Yeah, and we I like, think it's disrespectful. We don't see her again after like we see her be oblivious to kill while making a frappuccino by making a really bad looking frappuccino while she's grooving out to some tunes and she's just completely ignoring the camera uh solid move i I, like i wonder if they just couldn't get her for that much time that might have so they just had to be like fuck it she she died off screen yeah she had some america's next top model to shoot she had to go be that doll in life size yeah, Life Size came out, like, early 2000s. It's possible. She probably filmed it in 2002. Yeah, this this movie has a bizarrely stacked early 2000s cast. Um, Like, between, like, the two guest stars and fucking Katie Sackhoff, who later becomes a big star. Yeah, I mean, Katie Sackhoff becomes a TV star. But, like, you're comparing Katie Sackhoff to Tyra Banks. That's true, yeah. Or Busta Rhymes. Yeah, they are not on the same level of celebrity. You're completely right. They just are to me because I like Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. And you like The Mandalorian. Barely in The Mandalorian. She's good in The Mandalorian, though. And she also plays that... She does the voice for that character in the cartoon. All right, all right. All right. I don't know if you guys have any idea what happened in this movie, but neither do we. I think a really uh, fun... Like, this movie is, as we said, Halloween, the next chapter or whatever. And I think it... I was thinking about this while we were watching it, that every Halloween sequel has an impossible task to accomplish of make a follow-up to a perfect movie. And so there's Halloween, and then there is every single sequel. Yeah, it's like they're all competing directly with the original instead of really with each other. It's really bizarre. No, I think it's the other way around. I think they're all competing with each other. Because you can't compete You're with right, the original. You're right, they're not competing the original, with the original. What the original I meant was perfect. they're all trying to follow... Yeah, what you said. They're all trying to follow up the original. You're totally right. And most of them don't work. I don't I don't think that's true. I think they work on certain levels, but I don't think any of them are as are as a perfect distillation as the first one. Like I think this one has sequences that I like. It's weird and it's goofy, which a lot of them tend to be, and for some reason people forget that. Like it's like, goofy in a really cringy way because it's so early two thousands raunchy college. Yeah. Like also this movie is directed by Rick Rosenthal, who also directed Halloween two. So this he has directed two Halloween twos in a sense. Which is just put really- that in my epitaph. Yeah, we hear nothing about Jamie Lloyd in this movie. I thought we were going to hear something. It's mostly unclear if these movies are related to... Because, like, this movie seems to further distance itself from the Thorn trilogy. Especially when um, that one character who's in the prison asylum with Jamie, Lee Curtis. Yeah. Lori. Yeah. Not to be confused with Jamie, her daughter. Yeah. Um, the, the guy in the clown mask who, um, memorizes information about serial killers, he lists Michael's discography and it doesn't include... His killography. Yeah, it doesn't include everything that we've seen, you know? Yeah, it just includes 1, 2, and H2O. Exactly. Which, he's a really convenient plot point. Truly. Yeah. And another guy we don't see for the whole rest of the movie. Yeah. Um, but I I think this movie does a really interesting job at 
trying to make a sequel to Halloween because it instead of it being like going house to house, they do like a haunted house mm-hmm. type movie. And the like, I think a big stylistic icon for the Halloween movies is the POV shot. And so I think they use that in a really interesting way with the yeah, you're the right. streaming cameras. And they give you the impression that um, the cameras that each of the characters are wearing, like you get um, breathing, like yeah. heavy breathing that you would normally only get from Michael. You get that for like most of the characters when they're doing like up close spooky shots from their point of view. Yeah. So I think like if you're looking at what elements to from the original and augment in in an interesting way i think it does that successfully yeah ideas wise it's pretty good just the execution is very weird yeah does buster rhymes at the end he comes back and it's a surprise did you say trick-or-treat motherfucker yes okay so buster rhymes says trick-or-treat motherfucker he does yeah he has a couple of one-liners for michael who he calls mike yeah, and, and at one point he calls him Mikey. Will he stand for that? Uh, I don't know. There, this movie didn't get a sequel. I think there was a planned sequel for this movie that would follow Buster Rhymes. He's the new Laurie Strode. I would have liked that. There's a there's a movie, uh, or there's a there's a YouTube video about the un, unmade Halloween sequels that were all planned at some point. So, like, it talks about the original Halloween 4, it talks about the original sequel to Resurrection, and it talks about Freddy getting his his own movie. I think it's weird that they kill Laurie, and that it is, it's no longer following Michael's bloodline, but it is now, like, fucking, they're, like, fucking with his house. Yeah, I mean, it really would not make sense for him to be targeting them at all unless they were fucking with his house. Yeah, which then is brought back in Halloween Kills, where it's like, he's all about the house. He loves his house. But it's weird that they, that he went all the way to California. I, I don't know. It's, just, it's, it's a weird thought to make that the next movie, I guess. But it seems like they just had the idea for the movie and needed to figure out a way to bridge the gap between Jamie the was in prison movies. back in Haddonfield instead of in California? think so it really there's a lot of gaps here guys i think she was at smith's grove it says it in the beginning of the movie but i don't remember what it was well um uh, will the rob zombie ones confirm my belief that this is one of the worst ones that the rob zombie ones are the worst ones no that this is one of the worst ones oh (laughs) very possible i mean i don't like i think i don't think there is really one that i dislike i think they all the have halloween weird... movies yeah i think they all have weird interesting shit going on i think four is honestly F- five is bad but i like um i really like donald pleasant's yelling at a child I think okay because really i've got funny. the opposite take i mean i also think that five is bad but but I think five is also just hilariously bad. I like, like I think all of them are watchable, which I don't think is true about every franchise. I disagree, but I'm glad that you feel that way about them because I feel like these movies have been um, impacting my brain. Like I was saying before the podcast, that I feel that this has been more challenging for me than watching The Thing every day in February. Like, I had a Michael Myers nightmare two nights ago for the first time. And it was it was unpleasant. I wanted to get out of there. And you did. It's been making me feel a little weird. Yeah, I have, I have been feeling a little bit twitchier when I'm, like, alone. It's, it's a little spookier. But also, like, the evil of Michael is so confined to Haddon, theoretically, that it usually doesn't make the jump to to my brain as often. Yeah, what the fuck would Michael do in the city? 
My- <laughs> Michael takes Chicago. Halloween 14. Michael goes to town. <laughs> <laughs> Michael in the city. Shape in the city. <laughs> the shape in the city. Michael hangs out in the skybox on the Sears Tower. <laughs> Could you imagine, a, like a, it, um, a shot from below of Michael in the little thing that is it called the skybox? Yeah. In the skybox, him just standing, and you just like see his feet, and it like, I don't know, either pans up or back. Imagine him reflected deep in the bean. Yeah. It's the skyline, and then right in the middle of the skyline is Michael's face. Watch out. Michael's at your basement show, and he didn't bring any beer. (laughs) He's going to hit his head on your pipes, and he's not going to forgive you for it. Yeah, does Michael just become... Michael, shape in the city. (laughs) Michael just becomes, like, a crust punk. Yeah, do you think he knows how to ride a train? (laughs) Uh, yeah, does he- He knows how to drive a car, but can he ride a train? He knows how to drive a car, and we learn in this movie that he understands cameras. Yeah, we do! Hey, we don't know if he knows how to operate a camera, but we know that he, like- Understands that they are conveying an image to someone else. Yeah. Which is interesting. Does he know about the internet? This movie is- Oh, this movie is jerking itself off about the internet. It's like, check it out. We've yeah. got computers. She saved the, what's her name, Sarah? Yeah. She's her, saved like, by the internet. Her 15-year-old uh, internet chat room friend, like, uh, uh, goes to a party and uh, goes into, like, the the kid's absent dad's sweet office and like pulls up the live stream and a bunch of people end up in there watching it with him and they end up saving uh saving the last girl besides besides frank i mean freddie freddie um by uh like warning her while they're monitoring the cameras about where michael they're, is they're emailing her cell phone they're emailing her cell phone. There's there's a line in this movie that is, hold on, I just have to send a quick email. <laughs> yeah, they do say to each other, did you check your email? It's very funny. And they mention internet. Is this the first movie to mention internet porn? Ever? Yeah. It, I mean, it's 2002, so like, how long have websites been a thing? Longer than that. How, how long has, like, streaming video been a thing? Right? Like, at this point, it's still, like, fucking quick time. Anyway, yeah. sound off in the comments. Watching, s- sound off in the comments if you used to jerk it to quick time porn. <laughs> Baby, I think internet porn has existed as long as... I guess as it would be a down... People have had so access you wouldn't have to, to the stream internet. It. I mean, that's what everyone says. I mean, you don't even have to download anything. You can just go to a page. You're right. And I'm, scroll I'm, I'm, through fucking galleries I'm, of titties. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking too modernally. Yeah. I'm thinking like, too much of streaming A, a porn site looked different back then. Yeah, it was just images. You could just look at images. Yeah, yeah. you could just, just like, like... Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, a, trading, a trading card deck of... Sound uh, off in the comments if you used to jerk it to QuickTime porn. Okay. Toy talk... Toy talk, toy talk. Uh, today and tomorrow are TFCon, unofficial Transformers fan event that sometimes comes to Chicago. The last time they were in Chicago was 2018. I was a volunteer at the show, and it was a fun time. This time, I decided not to volunteer. I decided to pay money to go. And it was a good time. It was much better. I'm so glad I did not volunteer. At one point, I was like, it was stupid to not volunteer because I don't have a job. But then I thought, because it's a, it's not a, it's not a poorly run show. I think lots, lots of things about it are Contrary to what you said earlier. Oh, you're right. You're right. I do think it's a poorly run show. There, I said it. Um, I'm not a coward. 
I just think that they were un- underprepared for for the turnout, which I think is fair. I was not prepared for the turnout. Um, but gripes aside and how long it took to, to pick up a wristband aside, I got some good toys. I got uh, two of the same toy because I have a mental illness. And it's called... Insanity. No, that's not good. And it's called... Poop Syndrome. Oh, yeah. (laughs) No. Uh, It's called... Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Anyway. It's, um... I got two of the same figure that have... They're different colorways which is how I think of it. Uh, so now I have all three colorways of that figure, and I'm extremely happy about it. So it doesn't even matter that they are the same. What matters is how much dopamine is rushing in between my synapses right now. And that's all that matters, right? At the end of the day, the amount of dopamine in your synapses. Yeah. Uh... So that was good. And then I also got some other things that I was looking for. I walked in and within like 30 minutes, I had found everything I was, not everything that I was looking for, but I picked up probably 75% of what I was looking for. And I saw two other things that I was, that I may or may not get tomorrow, depending on if the sellers have discounts. Jim, you look like you're falling asleep. I was very exhausted by this movie. And I've got to wake up early for TFCon tomorrow. Yeah, you're coming with tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's We're okay. Gonna... My plan wash will be quick. Go for it. Okay. That I mean, that's that's pretty much it. We'll have more to report next time after our second day at TFCon. Yeah. My first day. Yeah. I'm but excited. It was, but it was good and it was fun. And that's all I got to say about Toy Talk. Mm-hmm. Toy Talk. All right. All right. All right. Time for la 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 watch. Okay, so um, today and yesterday, it has been very nice out. It will continue to be very nice out tomorrow. Basically, it was 79 degrees today. Nice. I spent a while reading on the porch, which was really nice. Um, Biking to work today was really nice. Lately, biking down Kedzie past Humboldt Park has just been gorgeous that's like i'm worried i'm going to run into a car door as someone is like opening it up you know yeah that would be wow looking at the beautiful leaves because there are some really nice maples and ashes and oaks and just like really really beautiful shades of 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 fall happening right now um and you're and you, ha- you legally have to watch the plants for the show. I have to. I have to. And today, I watched some plants get eaten by two horses <laughs> who became my friends. <laughs> their, names their names are Clover and Egypt. One is small and round, <laughs> and one is unbelievably huge, but apparently small for a horse. And I overcame my fear and uh, hung out with them and even fed Egypt a carrot, and her mouth was so snuffly. It was just like... <laughs> it was honestly very nice, even though I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to them and took a shower as soon as I got home but I got to watch them eat so much grass like they were they were there for photo ops with kids and like in 90 percent of the pictures they're just eating grass that's great <laughs> those kids are gonna look back on those photos and be like why is this horse eating grass they're gonna look back on these photos and be like oh this horse was having a good day <laughs> this horse was having a nice smorgasbord of of grass with like a, a few carrot shreds in it and maybe Maybe some candy. <laughs> I don't think I knew that you had a fear of horses. Okay, I just am generally freaked out by them. I think we have talked about this. Their heads are They're so big. Yeah. Like I was standing next to Egypt and I was just like holding her head and I was like, this is the size of my torso. Yeah. yeah. Horses are horses are weird and scary and they, they could stomp you. Yeah. 
These guys were so incredibly nice. They could kick you. Like, I was worried about walking around behind them, and they were like, the, the horse handlers were like, these guys are literally, like, the most chill ambassador horses in the world. Like, you can walk behind them, and they will not even care. Like, they were unperturbable. That's crazy. It was amazing. Like, I don't know. I need to remember the name of the animal sanctuary or... Uh, education zone that they work at is right by the conservatory that they live at. They don't work there. They're horses. I guess they do work. They get paid in carrots. They're just not paid. Horses rights. Hey, those guys are living a good life and I love them. Anyways, this episode is dedicated to Clover and Egypt. <laughs> I start my horse boy era. Just kidding. Is that is that plant launch? Uh, 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 uh. If I ever break glass, if I ever become a horse boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for Plant Watch. Do, 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 do. And with that, that's the end of the show. We're tired. Go to bed, guys. We would like to thank Chromus Knight Slitherford for our editing. I would like to thank Jam Doty for our artwork. I would like to thank Sam for sitting across the room and be really pretty. Thank you. Now, up next is the first Rob Zombie movie with, we're gonna have another guest. It's gonna be a famous YouTuber. Oh yeah. How famous? Well, that's relative, my friends. Good night and good luck.